The NFL draft is officially in the rear view mirror. And after a draft, analysts love to make all these predictions and talk about teams change the future of their franchise with their draft picks. And this team's going to go be a Super Bowl contender for the next five years because of this one draft. However, if the Russell Wilson fiasco taught us anything, we know that you can't actually know until you see the on-field product. With that said, I made a list of three teams I believe quietly did an incredible job getting value at each one of their draft picks. Here we go. First team I chose is the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams had an incredible 2023 draft. They got great players in the late rounds, such as Kyron Williams and Puka Nakua, their two leaders in scrimmage yards last season. They got hot in the second half of the season and wanted to continue rolling with the same core into this year. However, Aaron Donald put a bit of a wrench in their plans by deciding to retire. In my mock draft, I had them trading up to get Jared Verse to plug and play him right in where Aaron Donald was and continue rolling as if Aaron Donald never retired. However, I was wrong. They didn't have to trade up. And they got Jared Verse at 19. I was right about them trading up for an FSU pass rusher because in the second round, they ate it up to get his former teammate, well, I guess new current teammate, Braden Fisk. The two will more than replace Aaron Donald's production on the defensive line. In addition, they did a great job getting Blake Horn to pair him up with Kyron Williams. Blake Horn has been one of the top running backs in college football for years. So it was a big part of Michigan's national championship team. He will bring an extra factor to the Rams offense. Another thing that they did that I really liked was with the, with the 99th pick, they drafted Cameron Kitchens, safety, out of Miami. After allowing 4,195 passing yards in 2023, 13 most in the NFL, getting a safety, who's a ball hawk, had five or more interceptions in each of his last few seasons at Miami, is definitely a great idea. I really love what the Rams did with their picks, and I think they brought great value to the table. The second team I chose was my Denver Broncos. It might just be my biased opinion, but... I think that Sean Payton did exactly what he was trying to do in this draft. He got Bo Nix, he got his quarterback. Bo Nix was the obvious pick. If you were shocked by this pick, you either don't know much about football or you're just not very intelligent. I don't know what to tell you. And it was an amazing move bringing in his number one receiver in the fourth round. They got Troy Franklin. Getting a guy in the fourth round who had 14 touchdowns and 1,383 yards in his senior year is incredible value. In addition, I also liked their linebacker pick in the third round, Joan Alice out of Utah. After watching some film, I really don't know why he wasn't a higher prospect. He had 12 sacks, including a couple on Caleb Williams, a great player off the edge. He's going to be a developmental piece, but he'll be great for the Denver Broncos. However, what I was impressed with most was the, the value Denver got in the fifth round. Denver drafted corner Chris Abram Drain with 145th pick out of Missouri. Per NFL.com, Abram Drain was the ninth best corner and 63rd best prospect in the draft. Getting him at 145 is a steal. In addition, they also drafted running back Audric Estime out of Notre Dame. Estime was incredible at Notre Dame in 2023, putting up 1,483 scrimmage yards and 18 touchdowns. He fell because he had a bad combine. However, if you look at his pro day, his combine was just a fluke. At the combine, he ran a 4.71. As pro day, he ran a 4.58, and many other stats like that. Audric Estime is a monster. He's six foot one, 220 pounds. He'll be unstoppable in short yardage situations. He'll fit right into the Salmachi P. Ryan role. Again, it might just be my opinion, but I think the Denver Broncos did a great job with this draft, and I was very pleasantly surprised. My favorite 2024 draft class was the Washington Commanders. First and foremost, they got Jaden Daniels. I've said on multiple occasions that Jaden Daniels, in my opinion, will be the most successful quarterback in the NFL out of all the quarterbacks in this draft class, even more than Caleb Williams. That is because Jaden Daniels is the type of player who turns around a franchise. He makes the people around him better. Before bringing in Jaden Daniels, LSU and the two seasons prior went 11 wins and 12 losses. In the two seasons under Jaden Daniels, they won 20 games and lost only seven. I expect him to bring a similar turnaround to the Washington Commanders. I think he's going to have a very similar effect to C.J. Stroud. The Commanders are on the rise exclusively because of Jaden Daniels. In addition, they brought in a guy in the second round. You might have heard of him, Sirhan Newton. Newton was expected to be a first-round pick. He was 
viewed as one of the top defensive tackles, maybe even the top guys on the defensive front, the front seven. However, he somehow fell to the second round. Incredible value getting a big man in the middle of the defensive line for Washington. In addition, they got in the second round, cornerback Mike Sinstrell out of Michigan. After starting his college career as a receiver, Sinstrell converted a cornerback and played a big part of Michigan's national championship winning defense. Sinstrell had a monster year in 2023. It was a big part of Michigan's national championship de winning defense, as I mentioned, by picking off six passes and returning two of those to the house. Considering the fact that Washington's defense allowed 4,627 passing yards in 2023, ranking dead last in the NFL, Sinstrell is a big time pick. The commander made yet another second round pick, their third second round pick, by selecting tight end Ben Sinnott out of Kansas State with the 53rd pick. The commanders only had one receiver break 700 yards in 2023, and their top tight end, Logan Thomas, didn't even reach 500 yards. Therefore, their new play caller, Cliff Kingsbury, was more than glad to scoop up Sinnott, who put up 676 yards at Kansas State, despite having mediocre quarterback play. Washington commanders were not done yet. They added another two offensive pieces in the third round. With the 67th pick, they selected a guard, Brandon Coleman, out of TCU. With the 100th pick, Washington selected a receiver with a familiar last name, Luke McCaffrey, out of Rice. McCaffrey fell to the third round because he started his college career as a mediocre quarterback before recently switching to receiver. In his senior year at Rice in 2023, Luke McCaffrey was electric, showing similarities to his brother Christian. Luke put up 1,109 scrimmage yards and 13 touchdowns in his last season at Rice. He has big shoes to fill, but I expect Luke McCaffrey to be one of Jaden Daniels' top pass catchers in the NFL. Washington did make a couple other picks, but I've deemed them irrelevant. In conclusion, the Washington draft class is incredible. It's hard to say that they're going to be a great team now because of this draft class. We saw it with Russell Wilson. You can't say until you see the on-field product. But I really like what they did and the value that they got with each one of their picks.